This is the second part in a three-part series that runs the numbers on the supposed global flood of Noah. In the last video, we calculated how much water would be needed to flood the Earth to the summit of Mount Everest and came up with 4,513,117,056 cubic kilometers. We then looked briefly at where that water came from and split it evenly between the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven and assumed that half of this water came from what some creationists call the vapour canopy and came up with some truly staggering figures for the size and volume of the vapour canopy that would be required, eventually arriving at a vapour cloud the size of planet Neptune. In this video we continue, this time looking at the atmosphere that would be required to carry such a vapour cloud. The water content of the Earth's atmosphere is around 0.4% across the entire atmosphere, which means that although there are 5 quadrillion tonnes of atmosphere, only 20 trillion tonnes of that is water. Now, that sounds a lot, but if all the water in the atmosphere was to suddenly fall as rain, the depth of the sudden worldwide flood would only be 25 millimetres, as the total volume of the water in the atmosphere is actually only 20,000 cubic kilometres. The volume of water that would be required to make up half of Noah's flood is around 2.2 billion cubic kilometres, and this is where we have a little more fun with maths. Now, to maintain a 0.4% water content in the Earth's atmosphere, we must first find out how many times greater the volume of the water in the vapour canopy cloud is compared with the amount of water in today's atmosphere. Just how much larger a volume is 2.2 billion cubic kilometres compared with 20,000 cubic kilometres? Well, it's this much. It's 110 thousand times larger. This means that to have a 0.4% water content of the atmosphere in the Garden of Eden like we have today, there would have needed to be 110 thousand times more atmosphere to hold all the water. Now, if back then we had 110,000 times more atmosphere to hold that much water in a vapour canopy, then the atmospheric pressure at sea level where Noah lived would have been 110,000 atmospheres, which is equivalent to 1,616,554 pounds per square inch inch, which is more than enough to liquefy the main atmospheric gases, including oxygen, and as water cannot be a vapour with a liquefied gas, I'm sure you can see that we will need a lot more atmosphere to hold our 2.2 quintillion tonnes of water vapour. And of course, therefore, sea level pressure is going to be even higher. Right. Now, if God made Adam in his own image, and Noah was a direct descendant of Adam, as we all are supposed to be, then we can surmise that from this, God is a bit like a fish that can live at pressures in excess of 1.6 million pounds per square inch and breathe a liquid atmosphere. And the question we should be asking is, why can't we? Well, I suppose it explains why Christians like to use a fish as a symbol of their faith. But I digress. Now, over 40 days and nights, all of this water in the vapour cloud condensed out of the atmosphere as rain. This atmosphere would have boiled off into space, meaning that Noah went from living in pitch darkness under an atmosphere that was 26,000 kilometres deep, containing 2.2 billion cubic kilometres of water, collectively exerting a sea level pressure of 1.6 million pounds per square inch, to one that was 100 kilometres deep with a sea level pressure of about 14 pounds per square inch, presumably with a pressure drop of about 40,000 pounds per square inch per day. 
The miracle there is that Nora and his animals didn't explode from the sudden pressure drop. Yes. Anyway, in the next video we get energetic and look at what happens when a Neptune-sized water vapour cloud collapses into a puddle 300 thousandths of its size. Once again, all the maths I use is simple basic maths, so you should be able to do it yourself. And if you want to look up any of my figures then you'll find them on Wikipedia, which I admit is not the best reference source in the world, but it is probably one of the most readily available. So, have fun and don't be frightened by all those very large numbers, and I'll see you in part three.